Welcome back to Kingdom Outcast. Today is episode number 15. I'm Brendan. I'm Greg. I'm Jordan. So you guys might notice, if you're on a different platform, that this is our very first inaugural episode on YouTube. So, of course, we're still going to keep it up as a podcast. You can find us on all of the major podcast platforms, but we're also going to try to put it on YouTube to do some more visual stuff, um, and we'll get to some of this stuff in front of us later on, but if you're a podcast person, stick with that. We'll still always be doing that and making it in a, in a podcast-friendly um, way, um, but if you would like the visual, then we'll do that as well. So today, we apologize that last week we missed an episode. Apparently, the birth of your first child and your anniversary kind of throws a kink into things. The, yeah, uh, popular things were going on in our lives. Yeah. Uh, marriage and children, uh, not exclusive to each other. And uh, yeah, no, uh, kind of ran out of time to do other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It, it was Greg's anniversary. It was my daughter's <clears throat> first birthday, um, so we had her party and everything. So fun times, but uh, got in the way of this, <laughs> which is all right because we need to take time off to give everybody time to watch in game. Anyways, I needed time to process. Endgame. I needed time to cry in a corner by myself. Actually, I did that n- enough in the theater. Yeah, it just it wouldn't have felt right doing a different episode that was not in game. No, right? I couldn't think of anything else. Yeah. That was it. That was a still even now. This is all I'm thinking about. <laughs> so hopefully from here on out we'll be consistent posting every single Monday. Um, so we apologize for missing that one. But if you haven't been able to tell by the title already, this is going to be a very spoiler heavy episode for Endgame. So if you haven't seen it, table this one, download it, save it, come back to it after you see the movie, um, and then catch up with the conversation with us. You have been warned. Yeah. From this on, this point forward, spoilers could happen at any point. So if you're listening and you still haven't seen Endgame, like you said, just bookmark this one, circle back around to it. Yeah, a couple pieces of news that we wanted to cover before we get into Endgame. Um, so there was a Galaxy's Edge media preview day earlier this week. Which Okay, so what all did they preview? I remember you told me I did forget. So essentially they... The media members got invited to Hollywood Studios under the premise that they were just doing the 30th anniversary Hollywood Studio stuff. Nice. To know the merchandise, the snacks, and everything that is happening today of the day of the recording, May 1st, is the 30th anniversary. Um, and then they were there, and they just kind of shuffled them over to an area, made them put on construction outfits, hard hats, and vests, and all kinds of stuff, and they took him into the entrance over there next to Muppets. What if you went to Disney and they put blindfolds on you and put you in the back of a van and then escorted you somewhere else? Would you be scared or would you be, you know, know that a mouse isn't going to execute you? I feel like I would trust it. <laughs> it took a very dark turn. <laughs> it's a legitimate question because what if that ha- what happened to them? Well, it didn't. So, <laughs> But um, you can probably find some media members who went – but essentially, they went in. I didn't. I didn't even realize there's two entrances to Galaxy's Edge, one through Toy Story Land, and one over there near Muppets. Wouldn't there have to be though? Probably for fire code reasons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but Toy Story Land only has one entrance and exit. Yeah. But anyway, they went in, and then they were apparently right there at the beginning of the queue for Rise of the Resistance. So yeah. basically, they just. They got to see kind of the layout of the land and just how one one word that kept popping up in the videos that you sent us was just that how immersive it was and how just you felt like you were literally trans, transported to a different planet and, and just how detailed everything is, which, again, I, I mean, I mentioned several times, I haven't been to Pandora yet, but Pandora is kind of that way too. Like, it, it really seems like you're stepping into a completely different world when you go to pandora it sounds like they took it even a step farther with galaxy's edge yeah and it's huge apparently Um, well yeah no i expect it to be huge i but everything that i've read is that everybody expected it to be big right but it's bigger than you think bigger than you can even like (laughs) comprehend and the sight lines uh, or other things that people commented on were like all right you see the first line of buildings in architecture and then there's a mountain range, 
And then behind there, there's another mountain range. Yeah, that is so just like it's all layered, basically. Yeah. So. To make sure you feel like you're there, which I'm happy about because I was a little bit nervous. And I, I don't know if you guys have watched a video of Slinky Dog. No. But there's points in Slinky Dog where you can kind of look into Galaxy's Edge. So I thought, you know, that would throw it off if you can see Slinky Dog. But it seems like they're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. Throw up a couple trees. <laughs> Block the sight lines. Yeah, yeah. Put put a edge on a building awkwardly. Yeah, cover it up. So the other piece of news that we had, um, and since we've been off for two weeks, there's been a lot of lot of news. But the two that jumped out to us, um, the other is a Ghost Rider TV show. So I I don't watch Agents of Shield, but apparently this is kind of a spinoff from that. Um, it's not. It they said technically it's not a spinoff uh, because they were. They said they're going to be starting kind of fresh with the character. It's still Robbie Reyes, um, which is he's not the Ghost Rider. He is one of the different he Ghost is Riders. A Ghost Rider. He's not the original. He's not Johnny Blaze. Uh, but which they've teased Johnny Blaze in Shield. In Shield with posters and this and that, this and that. that there was found an, with the book. Yeah, th- there was another Ghost Rider that showed up in Shield, but all you did was see the back of him. Uh, and they never confirmed which one it was. Everybody assumes it was Johnny Blaze, but uh, I don't know if we'll ever get confirmation or not. Uh, but the Ghost Rider TV show will be the same character of Robbie Reyes, same actor playing him. Uh, so they they are kind of linked together. However, they said that this is not going to involve the story from S.H.I.E.L.D. in any way, shape, or form. It, it'll be a fresh, brand new story. Um just a different story with with the same Ghost Rider, which I I I really like the character in Shield. I thought they did a good job yeah. with it, even though it wasn't Johnny Blaze. Uh, it was a character I was completely uh, unaware of and had no prior expectations for uh, going into it, and I I I thought he was fun. I, I really liked. I love the actor who plays him. Like he he played that part really really well, and when he showed up towards the end of. Uh, was it season five? Was that deal he had with Coulson or whatever that he said he'd be back for repayment? Yeah, something like So I'm wondering if the story has something to do with the story of repayment with Coulson. Because that, well, that, that's not what would be make involved sense. in S.H.I.E.L.D. at all. I guess that's so. right, yeah. I, I like that they can go to this. Because in the comics, Robbie Reyes is, in the new Avengers storyline, Robbie Reyes is the Ghost Rider. But he, when he was taken control of with some magic recently, he went into the underworld in his mind and he met someone that he recognized and it was Johnny Blaze who's now like the king of hell or something like that and he wants out. He wants his he wants his powers back. He wants to be walking on earth again. So it could have something, the comics have something to do tying into that which would be interesting to see on film. And one other thing to note, um, it is not going to be on Disney+. Plus. Uh, it's going to be on Hulu, which uh, that might be a little confusing to some people, but you keep in mind, uh, they have said that there's going to be no R-rated or mature content on Disney+. Plus. Uh, so that tells me that this, this show is going to be more along the lines of the Netflix shows that they put out, you know, Daredevil, <coughs> Punisher... Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. Uh, it's going to be more along the lines of that as in terms of tone and theme. So it's going to be a little bit more mature. That's why they're going to put it on Hulu, which after the Fox merger, Disney owns a large portion of Hulu now. So that's why it's going to be debuting on Hulu uh, instead of Disney+. Plus. Which, I mean, to me, that's promising because, like I said, I mean, it, it does have a more mature tone to it, which if you watch the Netflix shows, I thought those were outstanding. So and hopefully I do, it's all on the same lines. Oh yeah. And I like how the merger also opened the doors for stuff like this to happen for, cause they, since they did pull out of Netflix because they're conflict of interest of having your own streaming service, but having your stuff on Netflix. <clears throat> now you own a streaming service. And you're making a streaming service, so you can have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, it's interesting. I, this is probably like people will probably mock me, but like the Nick Cage Ghost Rider movies, are those connected? 
Like, no. is that any... Like, did they just, like, steal the character? No, it, it's it's kind of like the Blade movies. Blade is a Marvel character. Blade has always been a Marvel character. But they made a movie about a character that had nothing to do with it because it was Fox. Fox made those movies. I mean, it, uh. It's kind of like the original Spider-Man movies with right, Tobey exactly. Maguire and Andrew Garfield. It's just owned by a different studio. Uh, so, you know, they kind of create their own little Marvel universe there and, and create it like that. And they just make no mention to Marvel whatsoever because they don't have to. Yeah. So the, so the Ghost Rider movie with Nick Cage did get the idea mm-hmm. from the comics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was Johnny Blaze in that movie. He was Johnny Blaze. Which is the original Ghost Rider. That's correct. Interesting. Didn't they make more Ghost Riders? They made two, two movies with Nicolas Cage. The first one was... All right. The first one was better than the second. The one. second one was uh, hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Distraction, yeah. fire barrel. I think we're ready. All right. Oh, Are you guys gosh. ready? I'm. I don't know. Okay. I think uh, talking off air, we kind of all three have different opinions of Endgame. I think. I think that's the kind of movie it is. It touches everyone in their own special way. <laughs> Okay, well, we just got put into the explicit category on iTunes. But, I mean, I don't even know where to start. It's probably just going to be a brain dump, and we'll see what sticks, and see what conversations come out of it. Can we start with one really, really great one? Tony Stark's dead. Well, all right, let's just jump right in. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm really surprised you didn't say it earlier. Okay, so... To me, I thought it was fitting because the MCU started with Tony Stark. It started, what, 12, 12 years ago, something like that? 11, 12 years I ago I think now? it was 12. I think 12. Um, with him, you know, the first Iron Man, him building his suit in the cave, and, you know, little did we know that that one movie was going to spark this entire universe. I mean, obviously, they kind of had some plans for it, with the uh, post credit scene in Iron Man with, with Nick Fury showing up. And that's kind of the first hint that we ever had of the Avengers. But to me, it was very fitting that it was Tony Stark that sacrificed himself to save the entire universe. Um, you know, I know a lot of people were thinking it was going to be Captain America that did that because that, that fits his character. It did. That, it fits that, his demeanor. It, it yes. fits what Captain America is. Uh, but to me, I just I had this feeling going into it that the Russos were going to throw us a curveball and that it was going to be Tony Stark that ended up sacrificing himself, and, and that's what it turned out being. And I thought it was, to me, I thought it was very fitting. I, I thought it brought his character, you know, full circle. You know, he, he's always been this arrogant you know, self righteous, self righteous guy. I mean, we we all know what Tony Stark is, but in the end, when everything's on the line and he looks at Doctor Strange and realizes he has one opportunity, one single moment to save the entire universe, he puts it all out there, even though he it knows he's he's going to lose literally everything. So I, I thought it really did a good job of bringing Tony Stark's Iron Man story full circle. I think that that what that scene right there that you were just talking about with. Uh, Doctor Strange, when he looks at him and he just does this, points his put finger up. Oh, I got chills. I'm like, this is it. This is the one. <laughs> so, I mean, we talked about beforehand that, you know, it was heavily suggested beforehand that one of the original guys was going right. to die. So I went in, I think similar to you, Jordan, thinking it's probably Iron Man because that's kind of the, that's the OG. We've been through it all with him. But as soon as his daughter came out in the beginning of the movie, I thought, okay, it's not him, so it's got to be Captain America. So I like that it flip flopped so many different times. Mm-hmm. Is that you know they leaned into it and and made you second guess a lot of things throughout the movie, and that's really a theme for a lot of the theories that we had going in. They did foreshadow how he would die at the beginning, of what Thanos did to himself when that doing the just that almost kill Thanos himself and if it can almost kill Thanos it's going to kill a human and so if a human tried to do it it was going to kill them hey, you gotta keep in mind though uh, Tony wasn't there when that happened yeah so For, he oh, foreshadowed just in yeah, general but not, I mean, 
I'm not sure if he. I mean, obviously, he saw what happened when uh, Hulk put on the uh, the their own Infinity Gauntlet and right. snapped his fingers. It's all he saw how much it affected him. So I'm sure he had an idea that this is it for me. Uh, like, if if I do so, this, yeah, I, it will kill me. So yeah. I, I think he knew, but yeah, I mean, it it was definitely an emotional moment, uh, <coughs> especially when. Pepper came up and said, "It's okay. We're gonna be okay. Or you can rest now." I oh, mean, it, yeah. it it really hit you because he didn't rest. He didn't rest for twenty two movies. So I remember beforehand in our preview episode, you talked about that in some of the comics, Tony is able to put his consciousness into an AI. Yes, and when they showed that, he recorded some video for all that. I really, I had had this inkling that that is exactly what he was doing. Do you think they kind of shut the door on that? That no. we won't? Mm. You think the, the, there's a possibility? I think that it, everything in the Marvel Universe is possible. I know Robert Downey Jr.'s contract is up. Uh, he, he has not signed on for any more movies. Right. Now, of course, negotiations can happen, and they can use his likeness. They can, you know, pre-record some stuff, like the... the um, the hologram, I guess, that mm-hmm. he that he had for his daughter there, uh, so that he could come back, you know, here and there, uh, maybe even as a consultant to you know some of the uh, younger Avengers that they're going to be bringing in or that are currently on the team. So I mean, it, it, I don't want to shut the door on this being Tony Stark's last appearance in the MCU because you never know what's going to happen in the future. Oh, yeah, right, but. It, let's just say that this is it. I, I think it was a great way for him to go out. Absolutely. There was a uh, one, two, one thing. We were talking about the preview episode. Are we going to see a team, another team introduced? Are we going to see more in- characters introduced and whatnot? I'm not disappointed that we didn't see anybody else. That this is a team we started with. This is the team that we ended with. At the at the end of going into the first movie, we didn't have oh we're making Iron Man, then we're gonna make Thor, then we're gonna make Captain America. At the beginning of the next phase, this is the end. We don't have preview for the future. That was on paper. That was it. Just like at the beginning, going into the first one, you didn't know anything else. Well, I mean, so I like how they didn't preview. There's no in credit scenes. Nothing. That's the movie. Walk away. Well, I think there was already so much crammed into the movie and, and so much to process that I think introducing any new major character was just going to be too much for the audience to handle. Oh, yeah. And I, I think it would have taken away a lot of what the original team was fighting for. That, you know... <laughs> You don't want to say it lessens kind of what they're fighting for because oh guess what you know if they die well guess what we got this brand new team over here no exactly right yes so I, I think it I think they made the right move by not introducing anybody else into the movie uh, just so you, we could focus on this team and, and kind of have some finality to it mm-hmm. so talking about some of the theories that we discussed before and I think that'd be interesting to see where some of them we were completely off base, some of them that that hit home. One of the things that we talked about after Captain Marvel, and I think pretty much everybody was in agreement, thinking that she would play this huge integral role and and that Endgame would be, like, focused on her. She maybe had 30 minutes of screen time. Oh, I'd say less than that. Less than that. I was thinking first 10, last 10. So do you think, you know, the, the subsequent movies that we'll get about Carol are going to be what she was doing during all that time? Or do you think they'll just gloss over that and we'll pick up with her? And I think they'll gloss. They'll tell you, but they'll gloss. I don't think it's going to be an entire movie of, oh, what was Carol doing? Because yeah. we know what she was doing. She was saving the universe where everybody was focused on Earth. She was the last line of protection for n- numerous worlds that didn't have the heroes that Earth had. So... Her job was kind of important, but it kind of did suck that she wasn't in the movie. <laughs> I, I think that they, and a, a lot of people did. They everybody hyped her up so much that it, I I literally forgot she was in the movie uh, because I was I was so focused on what was happening on the screen, and then 
when all, whenever the sh- the guns turned to the sky and started firing into the sky, it took me a second to realize what was happening. I'm like, is there another team coming in or is somebody <laughs> else, you know, coming in? And then I was like, oh, it's Captain Marvel. And then here she comes out of the sky. I mean, it, it had been that long since we had seen her in the movie that I forgot she was in the movie. I actually did. I knew immediately, <clears throat> immediately that it was her. As soon as they trained up, fired one volley, I'm like, it's her. But only because when they were bringing in this portal, this portal, this portal, this portal, and all these heroes were walking through, and she didn't, I looked at Mel and was like, where is Captain Marvel? <laughs> It almost, I mean, I was I, like, why? <laughs> I like the way they did it because it was it was almost too obvious, right? That she's the ultimate Avenger. She's completely yeah. unstoppable. That if she was there, it would have been uh, Justice League with Superman. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it would have been over five seconds, and that'd be done. That yeah. is something going forward. How do you reel her back? Yeah, yeah. I mean because. She, she is unstoppable. Yeah, with the way that we left her at the end of Captain Marvel. Uh huh. That is correct. Well, that begs the question: what, um, what, who's going to be the next big villain? Who is going to be the next big guy that uh, they have to fight? Uh, where it can't just be a one-on-one solo movie. It, it's going to have to require the entire team. Yeah. And you know, there's a couple people out there. Um, I guess. Galactus would be <clears throat> one who they just recently reacquired the rights to. They did with yeah, with, with Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. Um, I, oh, you you know more than I do. Yeah, Doctor Doom, Anilis, 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 Anilis. I don't know. I can't remember the exact pronunciation of it. But yeah, <laughs> we'll go with it. The Horde. I mean, anything like really <clears throat> cool intergalactic characters. The Shi'ar. I mean, stuff like that. You could mix and match and bring it stuff like ultimate powers that have been star faring you know for years for millennia where you know we just now get a ship that could go to space but wouldn't you and it was think, borrowed <laughs> like from a business standpoint from marvel studios what's his name kevin feige yeah yeah Close he enough. didn't know if the fox merger was ever going to go through right so i would think they had to have already of course they can adapt and they can transition now that they have the fox stuff but surely they have someone else in mind that was already under their control. Well, right. I'm sure they do. Um, but just show how adaptive they can be. Uh, I was, you know, I've been rewatching all of the Marvel movies, and I was reading up on Age of Ultron, and Joss Whedon was actually saying he his plan was to have Thanos as the main villain in the first draft of of Age of Ultron. That it wasn't going to be Ultron. That Avengers Two was going to be them finally fa- fighting Thanos, and they they scrapped that idea and decided to hold off on him a little bit to to build him up even more, uh, and that's when they came up with the idea of using Ultron. So, you know, just because they have an idea doesn't mean they can't you know table it or, or push it back or right. or re redesign it however they want to do. Oh, I'm sure they storyboarded fifteen different villains for the next phase. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they have all of this stuff, you know, four or five Avenger movies like written out with this one person. They have all of this that stuff right now. I'm sure they did it. I'm sure they picked the very best one. Mm-hmm. But here's things that if we get the merger, we'll go with that one. If we don't get the merger, we'll go with this one. I'm sure they laid it out just like that. They're smarter than we are and have more money. Yeah. So one other thing that we talked about in our preview episode was, is Thanos the villain in Endgame. And so did yeah. you think for a split second we were getting a new villain? Yes. Jordan definitely did. I had an inkling that someone might, especially with Jordan hyping that notion up going into it. It was possible. And then Thanos gets decapitated in the first like eight minutes. I was like, oh my gosh, Jordan's right. <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically I was right because we did get a different Thanos that was the main villain. Oh, okay, travel. that that's stretching. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I'll give you that you look. You called him dying, but not that the different villain because it's a different Thanos from like eight years ago. That's no. There's two Gamoras and there's two Nebulas. Uh, yeah, let's discuss. So there's two Thanos. So should we, should we discuss Gamora now or stick to our bullet points? I mean, we can we can talk about it. Whatever. My thing, the time travel stuff and different versions of people 
makes my brain hurt so bad. There, there's one part of it that Mel brought up, and I did not know how to answer. Her. If Captain America, at the end of all of this, and he returns the stones from where they came to shave off all those branches, was him going back and staying with Peggy Carter, did that create another branch? Or did he literally just stay in that timeline and became and now we had two Steve Rogers running around? I feel like there's so Did many... he still go into the ice? Okay, I think <laughs> I think that Endgame broke all of their own time travel rules. They did. I, <laughs> I agree. <think> they <laughs> broke all of their own time travel rules. In the Ronin bobblehead. Yeah, in Ronin film. If y'all can't see, we got a couple uh, little knickknacks up here in the front. R- Ronin bobblehead. And we have Hulk Thor. I mean, not Hulk Professor. Thor. Professor. 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 <laughs> My is, tongue is not This is friend. horrible radio for our podcast. Professor. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, they, I mean, they broke all their own time travel rules, it seemed like. And because it, uh, Captain America, obviously, he interacted with himself, which is kind of unavoidable. That scene that was, pretty was funny hilarious. Scene. That, that scene was hilarious. <laughs> but there's so many different ripples that you can talk about. And, like, you could do an entire episode, two episodes. On that. Right. Like, okay, when Captain America met Peggy's daughter, was that his own daughter? Was, like, who... It was Peggy's niece. Or Pe- yeah, Peggy's niece. Right. It, you know, like, well, things like that. I, don't, I totally thing. agree. Did, did, did When you're watching all of 22 movies, did this already happen? Did he already go back? Did he Is, is yeah. he living with Peggy somewhere? Because I feel like they laid ground rules that I could grasp my ra- mind around when Professor Hulk, Dr. Hulk, whatever the heck he's called in this movie. I think it's Professor I don't. Whenever he said, you know, you're not shifting anything that's already happening. That's not how time travel works. Right. But then, like, so now where is Loki? He, if right. he got the that's, Tesseract. That's where we're going to get the Loki miniseries from. Yeah. I guarantee that's what it is. It's the only way. Because other than that, he's not alive. So it has to be related to that because he's dead. The, this is This is just like Infinity War where there's so many loose ends that I just hope they don't gloss over it in the future. And just like, I'm sure his points are connected. I'm sure their points are connected. I'm sure we'll get that eight movies from now. They'll pin it in just right there. And they'll be like, Oh my gosh, was that? And then it will be, it's going to hurt your head for years. Just, I, we can we can argue about it. We can yell at each other for years, and we'll never know. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. I I feel like the general consensus is that Gamora is just missing. With Gamora, is there a chance that Tony did not know that she was good, and he snapped her away because she came down with Thanos? Like, did he see her battling on their side to know not to snap her away? I don't think they had any encounters during any of the movies. Um, I agree in principle. I th- I don't think he would have known who she was. So I, it depends on, I guess, how Tony yeah. decided to snap it. Like what he was thinking about when he snapped. He never met her in Infinity War. So no, because she, was, she was already gone when they when Quill came to... Because Quill was looking for her well, the on only- Titan. So he had literally, in two movies, had no interaction with Gamora. The only thing he would have had is, obviously, he knew that uh, that Star-Lord and Drax and uh, and Nebula were looking for her right. at the when they met up in Infinity War. But, I don't know, to me, it seemed like it would be pretty unlikely that when he's sitting there trying to figure out how he's going to snap all these people out of existence, and he goes, oh, wait a minute, who's this one girl that they were looking for? Oh, it's uh, oh Gamora. Okay, don't snap her. I mean... It, it, the only way I see it happening like that is that in his... Since she is, in that time, present time, a member of Guardians of the Galaxy, that he snapped away all of Thanos' forces. So if she is part of the... But the Gamora she, that was there... I'm just saying, was, in general, as a rule of thumb, ignoring the fact that she came in with Thanos, and she was eight years previous, 
Gamora. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, of, that's a lot of things. That's, that's a lot of. A lot of that's ifs. a lot of ifs. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I think obviously... I'm telling you, we can argue for years about this. That's the natural thing that it seems like Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Volume 3, will be about. Yes. But... I think you're going to have to make a lot of assumptions and basically ignore a lot of stuff for it to make sense. That's also assuming that... Um, remind me, who's the director that they just brought? James Gunn. Gunn. Yeah. That's assuming that he knew what was going to happen in Endgame. If he's already started writing... I think he did. I think they. I nah, think they would have to. I think they read him in on some of it, but not all. Of it. I, I think he would have been aware of what was going to happen in regards to Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, there, there's no reason that he would need to know that uh, that Steve Rogers was going to go back in time to live his life with Peggy. There's no right. reason that he needed to know that. Uh, the Hulk is now combined Banner and Hulk for Professor Hulk. I mean, he didn't need to know that. But as far as stuff pertaining to Guardians of the Galaxy that would affect future movies in that in that franchise, I think they told him what was going to happen. I think they. I think he got just like everybody else a redacted version of the script. But the only thing that was involved was his his people, so he knew what to work around. Yeah. But that means he knew what happened to Gamora and. Uh, to me, I we mean, don't. it makes perfect sense for her to be gone. Uh, obviously, though, they teased it at the end that uh, where where Star Lord is looking for her already on the ship and uh, trying to find her whereabouts. So, I mean, they're hinting that she's still still around, but I'm telling you, if you think about it, it makes no sense for her to be alive anymore. It really doesn't. I must have been an emotional wreck at that moment because I read that same thing online that he looked on the ship for her. I don't remember that. Yeah, it's when <laughs> Thor walks up. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. When I'm Thor really walks don't. up, he's got the screen up there, and he, he pulls it down real quick. Yeah. Nope. You need to go see it again. I, I think yeah. I think I was wiping the tears out of my okay. eyes. <laughs> you brought him up. There, there <clears throat> is one thing. There, there was two complaints I had about the movie, and they're minor. They're minor things, but one of them was Thor. I didn't like what they did with Thor. We had all weekend to talk about that because, you know, we spent most of the weekend together. Okay, and let me... So I thought the, obviously, him not being able to defeat Thanos at the end of Infinity War, it obviously affected him a lot. And, you know, the the visual gag that they had of him being out of shape and, and... uh, drunk and everything. When they first showed him in in his house playing Xbox with uh, Korg and Meek, I thought it was hilarious. I, I thought it was really, really funny and really well played. The joke ran thin. It, it did. I think they carried it a little bit too far. I think once he reunited with his mother and got Mjolnir back, that I think he should have been back to regular Thor. I've, I've, I always had this vision, you know, going as you know, he saw him, that he was just going to lift the hammer up in the air, Bolt of lightning was going to strike, and he's back to Thor. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen, and I think they just—I think they played the joke out a little bit too far. I, I just—it kept taking me out of the moment in the final battle when we saw we kept seeing glimpses of Thor, and he's still overweight and drunk. I agree. I was expecting there to be some like cut scene where like, hey, Thor took thirty minutes to go work out, and now he's ripped again. Yeah, or in the back of the ship, he's up out there like. Pumping something, like just yeah. finding some random piece of equipment and bench pressing. But no. I mean, even up into where they're trying to find the Infinity Stones, and he's he's telling everybody where the ether was, uh, the reality stone. I thought then it was already growing a little thin, I thought. And then they just carried it out the whole movie. I mean, that is a small complaint, but I it didn't... almost... Okay, and I, I talked to you about this when Ant-Man and the Wasp came out. Mm-hmm. Um in the first Ant-Man, obviously it took uh, Scott Lang a long... It took him a while to train and be able to use the powers and be able to communicate with the ants. But once he got it, he was competent at it. He he yes. knew what he was doing. Yeah. But in Ant-Man and the Wasp, it was almost like the Wasps took over everything and Ant-Man was just this bumbling idiot that like just kind of stumbled and lucked into everything. Yeah. And obviously if you're going to hire Paul Rudd for the character, you're going to use he's a funny guy, you're going to use his comedy, but it, it seemed like to me that like in Ant-Man and the Wasp they turned him into a bumbling idiot 
And I felt like they kind of did that with Thor in Endgame. And I don't know. Because just... you have Valkyrie to lead the Asgardians, and now you don't have, need the super strong macho Thor because you have Valkyrie. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, I, I, I see the correlation. It's yeah. almost because I've watched these movies most recently. And to me, it seems like because Ragnarok was such a hit and because – he was so funny in that it one. It was such a comedic They've hint. like doubled down on that. Yeah. That is Thor now. Instead of finding some sort of happy medium where he can be comedic, See, but he's also a leader. I mean, he's also a you know a god, demigod, yeah. whatever he is. I, I think that they did have a... I mean, obviously Ragnarok was a lot funnier than either Thor or the Dark World. Uh, but Dark World is funny for a different reason. Dark, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you stole my joke! <laughs> but, but, I mean... It, it, in Ragnarok, he, I mean, he's still a leader. He's still, you know, the leader of the the Asgardians. He's he's there trying to save the people and, and going to battle. And he's still this, yes, he's kind of this bro dude that they've turned him into, but he's still a noble character. And I felt like they just kind of did away with all that. And uh, even in Infinity War, he was that way. He was funny, but he was still kind of a right. noble noble character. And then in, in Endgame, they just wiped it away and say, hey, we're going to make you fat and drunk the entire movie. See, when like in the previews for the movie, when he's, you can see him sulking in the corner. Like, you didn't know if he where he was or what he was doing. But he's right outside the rest of the team, so they're strateg- like doing strategy, and he's, he's still sulking because Thanos bested him. That's fine. Use that anger... And he did, and he cut his head off. Great. Move on. Stay that stay that Thor and just grow from there. The whole getting fat and getting really drunk and say I, I just didn't get the point. I get it. I thought it was I thought it was very funny the first you know, the first couple scenes he was in like that. I mean he looked like the big Lebowski. He really did. And even he even did. Tony Stark mentioned that. He's like, get out of the way, Lebowski. And it was funny, but I I just felt it, it got it got old and it got old real fast to yes. me at least. You know that's just my opinion, but I just I had this vision of Thor in my head, and that's not what Thor is. Well, and to me, I'll agree that I I wish that he had become the Thor of old at some point in the movie that they had cut and, and he's back to normal. What does worry me that if what they suggest that he's going to be traveling around with the Guardians of the Galaxy now, I feel like that's cementing. That, like, he and Star-Lord are going to have that back and forth the entire time. One serious, one goofy, one serious, one goofy, yeah. I My my connection to this is, in the comics, they did have a second Asgard. It was Asgardia, but it was led by Thor's mom, not Thor's dad. So she decided IA made it feminine, so I'm wondering if Valkyrie's going to do the same, find a random planet, call it Asgardia, and lead the people off I mean, Earth. I, they don't even have to find another planet. I mean, they, they already have another settlement. True. And that she's now in charge of, and it, I guess it's a, it seems to be a you know Norwegian-style fishing town or something like that. Which was very cool to see. Um, and, you know, I'm fine with that. I, I like Valkyrie as a character. Uh, but if you remember in Ragnarok, she was kind of the drunk character. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's she's progressed a lot with know. that it never really explained. I don't think she. I mean, she's taken obviously what? on a more of a leadership role, but I think part of her story was Thor helping her realize that she was better than what she was doing in Ragnarok, and she needed to come back to her people on Asgard and, and that she made and an be oath. a leader. She took an oath to yeah. protect the Asgardians. And it, it feels like their characters kind of flipped a little bit where now Valkyrie is the you know the noble one and Thor is the one that's running away. Which, I mean, we don't know what direction the character's going to go in in the future. I think it would be great to see him in Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Um, but the Ragnarok version of the character <coughs> instead of the in-game version of the character. I'm totally okay with him... Becoming a, one of the Guardians. That's great. It keeps him in the loop. You don't have him on Earth. You can bring in other powerful characters. You don't need him to anchor everything. Cool. Let him let him go. We can have him in future movies and still have him off of Earth. Great. Don't, do not have him be Fat Thor. Yeah. For Thor. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. I didn't no. want it then. I don't want it now. Before so, it needs to leave. So you mentioned there was two things that you didn't like. What was the other? Well, I know the, this one too. The other thing is, and I understand that Endgame is more of a character-driven story than an action-driven story like Infinity War was. I just felt like Endgame, for the about the first hour and a half, two hours, I kind of felt myself sitting there in the theater thinking, hey, this is cool and all. When are we going to move forward with the story? But I just felt it drug, drug on a little bit. And it just, to me, I think they maybe could have cut, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes out of the whole, you know, grieving part of the movie. And I think it would have helped the pacing a little bit more. Um, I was, it, it just felt like it took a while to get, get the story moving along. There's actually three things Jordan hated. The other one was that Cassie was so much older. I didn't say I hated it. I just thought she's not. She's a lot older than five years. <laughs> she aged more than five years during that five years span. Yeah. Uh, because I, that's I that's a story on its own. I mean, in game is still. It. I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was. It's definitely a top five MCU movie for me. Probably even top three. I just liked Infinity War a little bit more, and. I was telling y'all off the air before we started uh, recording. I was talking with some of my friends, and they came up with a great point. Endgame is probably a better movie, but Infinity War is more watchable. And I I think that sums it up pretty good. It it just depends on what your preferences are for the movies. Uh, To me, I I just thought Infinity War was was just a little bit better. I could go back and rewatch Infinity War at any point. Endgame, I'd pretty much have to be in the right mood to watch it. Outside of that last hour. That last hour yeah. of Endgame was the greatest hour of MCU history. I mean, it was incredible. It was epic. It had every single character that we've met along the way. It was just it was mind-blowing. But it just took a little while to get there. I think the grieving process part to it, where they did where they went and did, and they found Scott Lang, and then they did this. and it, I, I liked... The first hour was grieving, and you needed it after losing half the galaxy's, you know, population. The next one was, you know, more strategy. Are we? Can we do it? Can we not do it? Did I think it went a little hair long? Yes. Did it need it? Yes. I'm 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 cool either way. I'm cool if it, they shortened it, but I'm cool with the way it went because it needed that before. It, if if you'd had two hours of that final battle, I that would blow them away. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I See, I even thought the final battle went a little long. And the emotional roller coaster that the whole movie puts you through. High, low, you're, you're high because they finally, they found Thanos. High because they, they killed him. And then everything starts to kind of fall apart and you're like, you're going down and then it's everything, everything about it just made you want to cry. And then, like, you see this, and then he sees uh, Peggy, and then you know he wants to talk to her, but he keeps his mind on the mission, and, like, he gives up his moment to talk to her again. I think that's <clears> the <throat> moment that he decided that he was going, if he had the Absolutely. chance, he would well, go back to Because that's where he grabbed Absolutely. the extra vials from Pim's yeah. office. Yeah. yeah. So, I liked how they were like, I know a place. I, I know a time when they were both in the same place, man. Do you want to? And, uh. See, it means like no man. <laughs> see that part confused me a little bit because whenever I was watching the movie, when he said, "I know where they're both in the same place at the same time," I thought he was talking about the Tesseract and Loki's scepter. I'm like, when was Loki's scepter ever back on Earth? The first time we saw it was in the Avengers when Loki brought it to Earth. Right. Yeah, you had no idea what, they're, I'm, I'm what the crap like, they're talking like, about. There's not two Infinity Stones there. But then once I started thinking about it, it's like, oh, he's talking about the Tesseract. And the pin particles. particles, because Ant Man has the scepter and he's taking it back. He's taking that one back. Mm-hmm. But it, it did take me a little bit. I'm. It really confused me for a little bit. I'm like, Loki's scepter was never on Earth before the, before the first Avengers. Because now they can keep their little time travel stuff going and unlimited because they have you know 18 vials of pin particles. So this is already our longest episode. Oh, uh, you knew it was going I mean, to I think I, it's all been great I conversation. Called I called it. However, there are some big plot points that we still need to talk about. Run it. I mean, A, 
Captain America and Peggy. I, I would like to point out, I called that before the movie. You did. A lot of people did. I know. You just read it and no. regurgitated it. No, to us. I. I really In Jordan's defense, we were talking about that way before we saw it online. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we spent uh, years talking about this. I thought it was. Uh, it kind of. Captain America and, and Iron Man kind of flipped roles a little bit. Um, and I thought it was great that he said, you know, I, I thought I'd try that thing that uh, Tony uh, set out to do and, and get a life. Yeah. And he never has had a life. Um, so I, I thought it was... Because he's been about the mission. Yeah. He's been about the mission his entire life, and now he, he finally had a chance to go back and, and actually have a fulfilling life. And, you know, who knows? We don't know if he had children with Peggy. We don't know what's going on with that. See, the kid that was in the back of the group, now we know is the kid from Iron Man 3. I thought that was going to be his son. Hmm. That would have been interesting. Sticking, I mean, I think it's the the perfect ending. It was. I mean, I've shared Catherine, my wife, was Devastated. so mad at the end of the first <laughs> Avenger. Like, fuming that they never got their first date. So, that was good to close that chapter. You kind of saw... Something like and the reason everybody theorized that this is how it was going to go in that uh, nightmare scene from of Ultron. Ultron that that was his that was his greatest loss is that he did not get to have that dance. Yeah. So, sticking with Steve, what did you think about passing the shield to Sam? I knew it was going to happen. So. I, I thought it was the right call. Um, I think both Bucky and Sam have been Captain America in the comics. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Um, But it wouldn't make any sense for Bucky to do it, in my opinion. Why is that? I don't know. In the world that we are now, where you need, like, people like Black Panther for, like, he's, like, the, like, the greatest uh, African American, or African, really, not even African American, African, (laughs) I should have, he himself, his real person, is African American. Anyways. You know, you know what my point is, though. Keep uh, digging that hole. I know. I've, I'm, I've seen daylight, though. Uh, they needed more people like that. They, you don't need another white dude as a superhero. Uh, and in, in part two, I'm going to plug a comic. Uh, Marvel's Generations, Cap and Cap. It is a, a comic that came out in 2017. I actually was going to bring it for both of you to read. My son may have ripped the cover off of it mm. because he doesn't know things that are valuable to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's one. Uh, but in that comic, that is where he gives the shield to Sam. And Sam is uh, Sam in the comic accidentally finds himself in the past. Helping you accidentally find yourself. In well, that, that that's actually the point of the issue is that all the issues are, are generations and it's seven issues and it takes the new version and the old version of the characters like two Hawkeyes, Kate and Clint, and for somehow the the galaxy the world kind of throws them into something from the past, and they have to work together to solve the issue. Well, Sam goes to World War Two to help. Steve in a mission he gets stuck and he is the one that gets to live out his life and then he as an old man talks to old man Steve and tells him that he should give the shield to Sam with the present day young Sam it's confusing it's you gotta read it Sam. it it is but you gotta read it because he got to live his life the way Steve he wished Steve got to live his life and he I... finally understood the sacrifices that Steve had made and he was ready to become Captain America. I thought it was fitting to give it to Sam uh, because, you know, if you think back to his introduction in the Winter Soldier, uh, he was just a, he was a regular, you know, soldier. That's what he was. And, you know, he had come back and he had tried to, you know, establish the uh, kind of the VA meetings and, and everything for, you know, the troops returning home and everything like that. And as as the movies progressed, I mean, he is with with Steve one hundred percent of the way. Like he does not question anything that Steve does, 
uh, because he knows that that Captain America holds these these values that that he holds himself. Uh, and to me, I thought it was fitting to give it to Sam because of that, because he has been you know kind of there every step of the way from the moment he met him, uh, right there beside beside Cap. As opposed to Bucky, who Bucky is a little bit... I mean, he's had his own life. He Obviously, he was trained as a Russian assassin and everything. Yeah. And Bucky has his own kind of demons that he has to work through and everything like that. And I thought just up, upholding the values that Captain America stands for, I thought it was fitting to give it to, to Sam instead of Bucky. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that stance more than the diversity stance. I, to be honest, I, I, I think the diversity has more to do with it, and in, in, in not in a bad way, like in a good way. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think it's nice. I, I think it's well, and great. The, but I'm I pairing don't... that also with the comic that, sure, Bucky has already, Bucky had been him, but he also turned it back over to Steve. So yeah. When Steve came back from the dead or something, I don't know how it happened. Gotcha. But in the comics, he Steve loses his superhero serum, and that's how he rapidly ages to the age that he would actually be. And he needed to pass the torch, and he chose Sam. And then uh, eight, nine months later, you get the Generations comic, and it actually kind of goes kind of in-depth into the process of choosing Sam <clears throat> and why he chose Sam to succeed him. So, all right. What other big plot points? I think there. To me, there's one more big one, and that is Captain America lifting Thor's hammer and fighting with it. And Black Widow. We got to talk about Black Widow. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Black Widow first, and we can wrap it up with uh, with the hammer. Black Widow is another one of those time things that makes your brain hurt. So when Cap took the Soul Stone back, does that mean Gamora? Uh, well, Gamora and Black yeah, Widow, for that they, matter, yes. Do they get their souls back? Yeah, because soul for soul, right? I don't think so. I, the way that I think the way they've established the rules, because I mean they they were very they made it very obvious when Hulk uh, was I think he was talking to Hawkeye uh, during the battle that he tried everything he could to bring uh, to bring Black Widow back. And that there's just no way to do it, even with the power of the Infinity Stones. That there, be, that that <coughs> is definite. That once you give up a soul for the Soul Stone, it is 100% final. And I think that's kind of that was kind of their way of establishing, saying that she's not coming back. There, there's no way to bring her back. Of like, course, they could you know find a new way to do it, but yeah, I think within the terms of the movie, I think that's the rules that they set. I think that paired with the line of she didn't even know her dad's name, whenever mm -hmm. the Red Skull said her dad's name, implies that the Black Widow standalone will be a origin story. In yeah. origin story only. Yeah, yeah, but it will be what is that the first ever standalone movie other than the Hulk movies? See, and that's that's the argument is that Marvel's not in the business of making no, standalone movies. They are not. I and that's why I were bucked against when we were talking about that. They don't do that. They do everything for a purpose. I mean, I think it. I I think it could still fit in. It's kind of to me like the Star Wars movies where they've started doing spinoffs like Solo and Rogue One. I think it could be kind of in that same vein a little bit where they go back and they do a Black Widow movie to show how she was trained and how kind of she her, showed up in yeah, her Man early too. career and, and you know where how she got to where she was you know by the time of what the first movie showed up uh, Iron Man 2 Iron Man 2 uh, so I mean I think it could do a little bit to fill in her backstory because it is so mysterious you don't know much about it uh, you saw glimpses of it in Age of Ultron uh, but that was more nightmarish than anything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think they could do it set early, prior to the events <coughs> of all the other movies, and then, you know, have their own movie, but it's still connected to the rest of it. It may not advance the story anymore, but it does a little bit to fill in kind of the backstory of this character that we know so little about. Yeah. And I, I agree. And I don't think, I don't think the soul thing has any merit I don't think if you exchange the stone you get her back and get Gilmore back I, I don't 
I don't see so that. So how happening. many souls can Red Skull and the Stone Still no, no, collect? No, no, no. You have to think about this. What happened to Red Skull? It was, it was, if he's the guardian of that st- stone, where'd he go? He's just hanging out there on that mountain. <laughs> Just well, waiting for the next he's person. He's probably got a nice little cottage, nice little right. uh, studio apartment. He didn't have there. legs. <laughs> he's probably He was probably roommates with Thanos on his garden uh, planet. I, and just, you know, we just didn't see him there. It's a real, real concern of mine. What happened to Red Skull? <laughs> All right, so Cap lifting Thor's hammer. I didn't question it. Now I am, and I hate you both for it. Why? I don't know. I didn't even think about, oh, yeah. I was just so like, oh, my God. I mean, we were teased that in Age of Ultron. When he moved it. He, he slightly he moved, wielded it. He, I mean, he, <laughs> he, you know, dominated with it. Like, he spun yeah. it and flew. Like, it's. It was, uh, it was such a big payoff on something that we've been waiting on for a long, long time. Obviously, it has precedent in the comics. It has precedent uh, in Age of Ultron. And we finally got the payoff of, of Captain America wielding Mjolnir. Um, that's such a hard word to say. It is a very and, awkward word. So uh, I loved it. I, I even thought it was hilarious when he had Stormbreaker and Thor had Mjolnir. And then Thor looks like, at You get goes, the little one. No, you get the little one. And they switched. <laughs> um, but I mean, so I guess the question is, why was he not able to lift it in Age of Ultron, but he was able to lift it in... Uh, in game, it just came. It just came to me the same moment we were just discussing that in 1970s when he saw Peggy at the facility in New Jersey, when he made that decision to use the stones to go back and stay with her, he made himself worthy of someone who was, you know, had self sacrifice. That he made himself worthy of the hammer at that moment. But which version was worthy? I do. I don't, that's the point. <laughs> one thing, we don't know. <laughs> one thing I've I've read, and it's speculation, of course. But what they were saying is, in Age of Ultron, you later learn in Civil War that Captain America knew that Bucky was the one that killed Tony Stark's parents, right. and he was holding on to that secret, and that's what made him not worthy to to lift the hammer. But after the events of Civil War, now that that's out in the open, his conscience is clear, and he's not holding any more secrets, so that's what makes him worthy at that point. I don't know if I buy into that, but that, that's that been floating out there a lot that I've, I've read. I mean, yeah. it, that could be it. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get a, a total explanation of it. We probably won't, but gosh, it was such a cool moment. <laughs> it was. It, I think, does that rank in the top moments, single moments? In the top five for you, just like a moment that happened, where's it rank? I haven't thought about it, but probably. I'd say a good top four. Yeah. Of him just coming, you're like. <gasps> <laughs> I thought it was great because who was a uh, Thanos standing over? Was it Thor? He lost the hammer. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the hammer just comes flying across, and you think, "Oh well, Thor's just you know summoning it to him." But then it flies back and goes to Cap, and he's standing there with it. I mean, you just got chills when it happened. It was you get a such sh- a cool moment. Shield in one arm, with yeah. genre in the other. <laughs> so we just have a few more things to chat about. Chat, chat. And not to end on a bad note, but were there any plot holes that you thought of? We, we Cassie. Kind of, Cassie. I'm joking. It, it just, she just <laughs> looked a little... It. The last time we saw her, she was like seven years old and then the next time we see her it looks like she's applying for college i mean yeah she did look a little old to me she, but you know she, whatever yeah. they gotta get her age appropriate so she can become uh what's her superhero name i don't remember i don't remember to be honest with you okay well she becomes a superhero at some she point she does so, spoiler just, alert they gotta get her age ready to do that she does similar with the pin particles i just don't remember what her actual name is like oh yeah stature i think that's it Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> Way to go, Jordan. I wouldn't necessarily call it a plot hole, but I guess it's my kind of... Undiscussed pl- plot point? My, yeah, kind of my gripe is we saw Ronan, if that's what we're calling him. He was never called that in the movie. I guess y'all said he had a tattoo that said... Apparently he had a tattoo that, that said Ronan. Ronan. I'm like, what? Like Ronan from Captain Marvel? Like, that was in... <laughs> So many of the previews, and it was like they just 15 seconds. Gloss. <laughs> he, okay, yeah, I'm back to being Hawkeye. 
I mean, I guess yeah. that's the same thing that they do in all these Marvel movies now, is they really mislead you during the Well, previous... even the uh, Black Widow, when she's spending all that time shooting into, like, the different variations of her hair and, like... I don't think what? it ever showed her in the it did. in the gun range. No, it did. No. No, no, nothing. So it, the whole that was driving the. Oh my gosh, is she? Is she? What's going on? How long? Nothing. Nothing to do with anything. Yeah, I mean, and the only other thing, I, and we've said it before, just all the time travel stuff. There's a lot of loose ends. Yes, but loose ends that you're. I think they're left intentionally loose, so it drives people crazy. It keeps people talking. Yeah. Like, we just spent the last hour and 20 minutes <laughs> doing. Yeah. So. I, I doubt we'll ever get an answer about them. I no, really do. I agree. I think we just have to accept the movie for what it is. It was a great movie, but there are a few things that makes you scratch your head. I think we're just going to have to live with those and, and enjoy whatever comes next. Were there any, real quickly, were there any Easter eggs that really captured your attention? Was Howard the Duck really in it, or did someone superimpose that? I didn't see him. I couldn't tell you. Stoney, my my friend Stoney, claims that he thought he saw Howard the Duck in the movie, and that's what made him go on Twitter to search for it. And that's where I got the picture from. And for those of you that don't know, there is a picture on Twitter, a screenshot from the movie, that in the final battle, Howard the Duck is in there, and he's got like a machine gun or something like that. A it's laser what it gun. looked like. <laughs> um, there is speculation on whether this is legit or whether somebody photoshopped it, whatever. But like I said, where I got it from uh, is my friend Stoney. Uh, he claims that he thought he saw Howard the Duck when he was in the theaters watching it, and that's what led him to search it out on Twitter. So it may be true, it may not be. I think it'd be kind of cool little Easter egg if it was, but I, I wouldn't be disappointed if it wasn't. My Easter egg is the suit that Pepper has. It's called the rescue suit, and that he gave it to her uh, so in case he ever needed to be rescued that she would have a suit of armor to come get him um, which they don't ever say straight out playing off that um, obviously it kind of it's not really an easter egg of more of foreshadowing is the very first scene that we see Morgan in she's got the helmet on mm-hmm. uh, so it could be teasing that she is going to become the new Iron Man when she grows up uh, obviously, some more time is going to have to pass because she's, what, five or something? Years. Maybe she's like Cassie. Yeah. She may get the Cassie Lynn. <laughs> hey, uh, there we go. Title, <laughs> but uh, I, I thought it it kind of foreshadowed her becoming a uh, a superhero at some point in, in her life. Not to go off grid again, do we see Riri become Ironheart? Girl from Nobody knows who that is. Okay. In the comic, <laughs> yeah, I have in no the idea comic, the girl, I, know, I know who it is. I know you know I what I'm talking a lot about. Of people out there right, know. yeah. All right, the girl was it Iron Man 3? In the college? Or was it Iron Man 2? I have no idea. He runs an Iron Man or Iron Man Tony Stark runs into a woman or a girl at well, college doing a, a speaking. Don't laugh. This is a, you're talking about Civil War. Civil War. Thank you. The mom that had her son killed in Sokovia. That's what you're talking about, right? Man. So let's scratch this idea. Yeah. We'll At some point, uh, there is a new Iron Man in the comics. Her name is, is Riri, Riri, and she uh, is Iron Heart Iron instead Heart, of Iron yeah. Man because you know she leads with her. But heart. I don't. I don't think that she is going to be. I think maybe Morgan is going to take her place in the MCU Jeez, that's version. a long time, though. There's also no Kate Bishop, from what we could tell. Because everybody thought that, that that in the trailer, Hawkeye was teaching Training, Kate right. Bishop. That was just his daughter. Yeah, how gut Again, how gut-wrenching was that oh, yeah. scene? It first... Five oh minutes gosh. of the movie, and I'm already like, okay, this is going to be emotional. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is dark. <laughs> uh, but I think they did confirm that Kate Bishop will be in the Hawkeye TV series. Yes, they did. So, They're currently casting, but they have not picked an so, actress I mean, for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we thought it might have been Kate Bishop, but obviously they're going to reserve her and, and hold her off until the Hawkeye TV series. Which is fine. Well, if it, they can still make it this daughter. The other things that I liked were some things I guess we don't have confirmed, but it seems like there were maybe some nods to some movies to come. So I know, Greg, Mm -hmm. you and I talked about off-air 
when all the females gang together and run towards Thanos. Oh, that gosh, how did I forget to mention for that? For A-Force? A-Force, okay. yes. So it's an all-female... All-female Avengers team. They don't call them the Avengers, which is why it's called A-Force. It's a whole branch on its own, and it's all females, and it's bad. And uh, I know Tessa Thompson, uh, the actress that plays Valkyrie, she did say that uh, there have been talks with Kevin Feige about an A-Force movie. Yes. Now, we don't know how involved the talks were. It, it could be just, hey, it'd be cool to do this movie. Or if they actually sat down and started like putting out you know, a storyline and, and a plot and everything like that. We don't know. She did say that there were some. There have been talks about an A Force movie, though. I say regardless, you you hinted at it at least. You know, the you acknowledge that it's right. A you, you acknowledge that this may be real. This may be a thing. But you would assume that not every female included in that scene would be in it. Like Pepper's probably Pepper's not probably enough. not. No, I. It it just seems to me that if if you it sucks to look at it this way, but if you. Look at it outside of the movies. There's a couple actors that it seems like maybe they're tired of dealing with. Right. Gwyneth Paltrow, I think, is yeah. one of them. I think she did say she was done with the MCU. I've also heard Jeremy Jeremy Renner is a jerk, but I guess they're going to do the TV series. Right? I have not heard that. Well, he'll probably retire after the TV series. That'll Which probably, is kind of the point of the TV show. It's just, I think, it's probably with anything, and especially a movie like this, or a movie series like this, where you've got so many big-name people, <coughs> there's going to be clashes. You can't please everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it takes up so much of your time, and it's such a commitment. I mean, it is years' worth of commitment. You know, eventually people want to move on and, and do different things, just like Chris Evans. You know, he, he said he loves his time as Captain America. He will always be grateful for it. It will always hold a special place in his heart. But he's ready to move on and do different things. I think he wants to get into directing and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, after playing the, the same character for you know however many years, yeah, I mean, eventually, eventually you want to try new things. And sure, how about it? Yeah, can't blame him for that. Yeah, completely off topic, but I do like normal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's a, <laughs> we we started to wrap it up twenty minutes ago. <laughs> but any well, I can. It's not really worth mentioning. But Chris Evans is very politically active as well. No matter which side you fall on. It is interesting <laughs> that Marvel and Disney have given him the freedom to do things like that. But if his contract expired and he started doing it pretty much after his filming has been done, there was nothing really they could no, do. No, I think he started before that. You think so? I mean, he basically started in yeah, concurrent with our uh, current president. Current president, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just okay, tried to I agree ignore with all that. things yeah. political. <laughs> I did too. I, yeah. I actually didn't know much about what he would he was saying until probably a couple months ago. But All right. Yes, all right. Anything else? Yes. What, what's your, uh, you kind of already said it, but what's your final verdict? Did, where do you rank it in your top Marvel movies? Oh, top Marvel movies? Top three. I couldn't give you an actual firm number. But if you base it on the last uh, hour, oh, it's number one. But overall, definite top three. For me, I think it goes Guardians of the Galaxy number one, Infinity War two, Endgame three, Civil War four, and then a toss up between Winter Soldier and Ragnarok. That's that's my top five. That's probably my Pretty close. top five as well, yeah. in a, probably a different order. Yeah. Although I've never seen Winter Soldier, so. I just take my Marvel. I cannot believe we're discussing all of this and you haven't seen Winter Soldier. Yeah. It's one of the most important movies. <laughs> all right. Last thing. Promise. Giveaway. Giveaway. We're yeah, going to try to. We got two. We're going to do one, but then we're going to tease another one. We're, yeah. Yeah, we're actually going to discuss one right now, though. Uh, our giveaway for this right now is YouTube subscriptions. Is that what they call yep, them? Just okay, subscribe yeah, to our new YouTube old channel. Old Man Greg over here. Subscriptions. Yeah, all right. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we're going to choose randomly from a uh, user to receive the first issue of Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars A Galaxy's Edge. And it's the – is it telling the backstory of the land? Is that – You probably know better you, than no, me. No, no, no. I think that's – I didn't know what it was, which no, is why I bought it. From what I've seen it or and heard that uh, they are going to put a series of comics out, uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, that's going to kind of 
do the backstory of the new park uh, in Disneyland and Disney World. Uh, so this gives you a little bit of background information of how or what kind of setting you're going to be in. So this is the first issue of that. Um, so obviously we are just now starting out with our YouTube and uh, we're trying to build those subscribers up. Uh, you know, appreciate all the Twitter followers and everything. Are we on Instagram yet? We're not. We'll probably be on Instagram. We've talked soon. about Instagram, but right now we're going to try to get our YouTube up and running. Uh, so we thought, what better way to uh, try to get that uh, those numbers boosted a little bit and, and get our name out there is uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge volume, issue, number one. issue number one. I almost went Guardians of the Galaxy. You and said did volume almost go. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in, in the future, once we get to our Aladdin, either review or preview, we'll be giving away an Iago Funko Pop. Yep. So probably similar uh, with uh, YouTube subscription or subscribers, but you know we might come up with something different. But uh, Aladdin comes out in a couple weeks, right? Yep. So, so very soon. That will be coming out soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Do you, you want know, to put a time frame on this? Let's give it a week. Give it a week. You have uh, next, next Monday. One week. Wait, so, from like this coming Monday or the Monday after? This <laughs> you is Wednesday. have until Monday the 13th. Ah, Monday the right. 13th. Uh, make sure you get subscribed to YouTube to be entered for the Galaxy's Edge comic book. Uh, we will ship it anywhere in the U.S., I guess. U- U.S. only, please. Um, yeah, I've been into that before with giveaways. So... You we'll that, that, please. And then keep in mind, Iago is coming up as well, uh, closer to when Aladdin comes out. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you're ever looking to help the show, please feel free to give us an iTunes review or a review on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. It really does help so much to help spread the word for the show. So we appreciate each and every one of you listening. I'm going to say it. Love you 3,000. <laughs> <laughs>